Darren Streblo Comedy Show. 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 The mini cast. Welcome back. It's the Darren Streblo Comedy Show. DarrenStreblo.com is where you find us. And uh, my guest today is a comedian, musician, and author. He's got his own podcast called The Laugh Track Comedy Cast, which is awesome. And uh, he's a great guy, Mike Hickman. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Thanks, buddy, man. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, Man, I've been sitting here at my desk for, I don't know, years waiting on your call. So, <laughs> just, uh, you know, saying, please, but Darren asked me to be on his show. Please. I feel like a jerk Bye. now that I haven't called before now. Um, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, uh, uh, no, no, really. Thanks for having me on. What, oh, a, what an honor. Thank my you. pleasure. I've seen you live. Very, very funny. Uh, obviously multi-talented. You've not only uh, launched into comedy in the last few years, but you've also had quite a life-changing event in your family, quite a tragedy. And I wanted to have you on and talk about it because I think you've sort of uh, coped with it better than most. And I I think some of our listeners who have gone through similar things would benefit from what you had to say about it. But uh, uh, thanks for being willing to talk about it, first of all, and and tell us what happened, what brought it about, and how did it happen? Sure. Yeah. Let me let me see if I can do a a recap here. And um, uh, well, it was just just under two years ago. It was my son's birthday. He was uh, turning seventeen, hmm. and what he wanted to do for his birthday was was kind of what he wanted to do every day. He wanted to hang out with a couple of his buddies who are musicians. Uh-huh. and, uh, you know, swim, things like that. So I said, well, let me cook you guys a dinner first. So um, uh, my son and uh, uh, his two buddies came over to the house, and my wife and I made them dinner, made them a steak dinner that night, and then they uh, they were going to go over to one of the other boys' house and uh, play music and, and swim. That was the plan for the evening. And so I uh, fed them dinner, hugged them all on the way out the door, and uh, said, I love you to all the guys, as, as was, was custom. And uh, when yeah. you leave our house, you, you, you have an I love you. Yeah. And uh, so uh, our son was supposed to come back um, about noon the next day. And I'm, uh, I'm outside, and I get a call from one of my, one of my buddies um, that had caught wind of some news that I had not caught wind of yet. He's, and it was a voice message that was left, and it just said, Hey man, uh, I'm in Dallas. Uh, I'm in a meeting, but if you need anything at all, I can step out. Uh, just I have no words. Wow! And so and I listened to that voicemail. Yeah, um, and so I I called him back and said, Hey, I um, but what, what's your message about? I don't. He says, Have you have you talked with your your son this morning? I said, No, he'll be he'll be home in a couple hours. And uh, he goes, uh, Let me call you back. And uh, what he had done is he had called the chief of police, who was a friend of his, and he said, the family doesn't know. And oh. so you know, backtracking, yeah, yeah, backtracking what had happened was when uh, the boys got together, and without going into too much detail here, um, one of the boys became aggressive at some time during the night, possibly due to, to taking a drug, uh-huh. and had pulled out a, a, a machine gun from a car, and had uh, shot both the boys, one of those being um, being my son. Uh. And uh, he immediately turned himself in um, to the police and uh, just told them that I, I just killed my two best friends. And so you can imagine we, we got that news and was, was uh, just devastated. That's, that's uh. a very quick recap of what happened. As, as far as what happened on that night, you know, and it, the events to come are, are huge of what God did and the impacts, but it's, sure. you know, it, it's a journey. It's a journey. <sighs> that happened two years yeah. ago. Um, yeah. What became of the boy who killed him and what's going on there? Uh, well, the boy who killed him, and that was one of the, one of the boys that was at the table that night and uh, someone we had, uh, we had known for years and, uh, uh, I can't really Someone you fed dinner to, right? Yeah, and, I mean, was, and hugged, hugged on the way out the door. One that I said I love you to. By the way, I'll, I'll say here: take every moment you can when you tell someone you love them, or or to hug them. You know, let it, let it mean something every time you see them, um, because you never know huh. if, that, if that is the the last time. And so I know that sure. the last I, I have some comfort in the last words I ever said to my son was I love you, and he said I love you too. That's the last word that I mm. heard, the last word that, that he heard from me, and so that uh, I take some, some comfort in that. 
But uh, that sure. boy, I can't sure. talk about it much because he's actually uh, still on trial, so I really can't can't talk about about that. Sure. But um, so there's you know some forgiveness and things that my wife has has worked through. So it was a boy that we had known for for quite a while, and had there was never any any problems before or anything. So there was no alarms or <laughs> anything to you know red flags. You know it was just common things yeah, that, that right. were happening. So. We're st- the trial is just around the corner uh, as far as that I goes, see. and so we're kind of pressing on forward with what God has, has asked us to do, and God has kind of moved our, our he lifted lifted our heads and moved us forward. Wow. Yeah. Now, obviously, you're a person of faith, as am I, and, you know, and a comedian, so mm-hmm. it's interesting you going through, I mean, un- unimaginable yeah. pain yeah. through this. Uh, what's it like when people are coming to you, your friends and, you know, people at church and stuff? I mean, what are they saying to you and is it helping? I mean, or is it painful? I mean, it, I, you know, when it happened to you, I didn't know what to say to you. you yeah, know? well, I, sure. I, uh, and, that's, and that's common. I, I'll give you a couple of examples that might explain it a little bit better. Just, just a few weeks afterwards, you know, I'm in the grocery store and someone we know comes by. And they uh, they want to say something, this particular person, and I saw this lady just begin to cry, and then she passed me by as if she didn't know me. Not, oh, not, in, a, not in a sure. rude way, not, not in a way, because she had no words. And what she didn't know was, I, I was actually fine. Sure, we, we were hurting and working through things, but uh, God sort of downloaded uh, th- this incredible peace and comfort into us, I think, that can only come through... Uh, through chat tragedy, and we we I remember the the words of my wife five minutes into hearing the news was she went into prayer before going into any other mode, and she's just yelling you know before the Lord just just saying we will trust you, we will trust you, we will trust you to the end, and so that was uh, wow yeah, and so that wow. strengthened my faith immediately. I said yes, that's exactly where where our focus needs to be, and and the body of Christ came together. I, Nothing really bothered us. It, it's as if God gave us words from the beginning. The, later the day it happened, there was a, a band camp going on. My son was in band, and the principal and and someone and the band director said, "Would well, you don't have to, but would you mind coming and talking to the students?" And I, I love to talk to students in any condition I am I'm in. But they were sure. all affected by this in a huge way. News spreads really quickly. And so we were able wow. to immediately administer comfort. And what God in the beginning began to show us, as I'm giving you comfort, even, you know, this isn't, I guess, our job, but maybe a calling as Christians, as we receive something from the Lord, we give something from the Lord. He puts it in. Bit, even uh, even when the pain is, is stark and heavy as what you've had, you felt like you needed to share your comfort with others, really. Exactly, exactly. And, wow. and then, uh, uh, let's see, that... That week, I was on tour, the Texas Comedy Tour, with uh, Kristen Weber, Peter Wolf, Scott Smyer, and we, we were having a show, supposed to have a show that Friday, and this happened on, on Tuesday, I believe it was a Tuesday. So, of course, we canceled that show, and, sure. and we had a memorial uh, that day at the high school. And I tell you what, uh, Darren, when, when God shows up, it's, 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 it's really cool, because I've never huh. been to a funeral that no one wanted to leave. And oh, our, wow. our our worship band from the church was playing, and and three different pastors from three different churches in town, including an, another youth pastor, spoke, and were all united at this. And so, uh, as the worship band was was even playing, uh, towards the end, people would get up and they would just start dancing. And what you would think would wow. is that irreverent? That's irreverent. There was no feeling of irreverence. There was no feeling of uh, insensitivity. It was just, wow, this is right. And no one wanted to leave. And there were some people that weren't people of faith there. And I, I heard two of them say, I don't know what's going on. What's going on? And, <laughs> <laughs> and then people of faith would minister the people of, of no faith and strengthen sure. their faith. And then student after student over the next couple of weeks was, uh, I want to know the Lord. Your son made an impact on my life. And then we started to realize, wow. yeah, that... At the moment our son passed away, he would have had the greatest impact on those that need that level of impact 
for them to, mm. to turn to faith, for them to turn to God. If it had been a year later, he would have been at college. If it had been earlier, he had only been at this school a couple of years. But uh, God knows the numbers of our days, and he saturates those days with his purpose. And apparently, mm. God said, your purpose is fulfilled. And when God began to show us that and move us forward, then uh, it, it, it gave us great comfort, even in the pain, because God uses our pain. And I found that my comedy shows, I share this regularly at comedy shows, not as much what happened, but the hope that, that God gave. And, wow. and, and I tell them that when the rug of life is ripped out from under you, what you find underneath that rug is a sure foundation of Christ. And when we wanted to stay back in the past, at the last memory we had, the Lord showed us, your son's not in the past. He's not in the future. He's, he's alive right now, but every step you take forward is one day closer to seeing him again, and one day closer to being with me is the greatest part of heaven, is, is being with him, but being united. So when we move forward, it's not just that we're not forgetting the past. We're moving towards something greater. And, and it's just revelation after revelation. Uh, and, I, and I share that with the comedy shows as an encouragement. I don't share as much what happened, but the hope that came out of it, and it's still coming out of it, and there's, there's just so much more. <laughs> yeah, we're talking with Mike Hickman, comedian, and uh, after all this tragedy, you're doing comedy shows, and that doesn't feel wrong in the context of, of your life? Does it, it just feels natural to lead people into laughter? After all of this. Sure, and let me tell you. Let me tell you how there's there's this incredible way that that God uh, gave me actually more excitement, more passion uh, for doing comedy than ever before. In fact, my writing is completely been transformed. The way I see an audience is completely transformed now. And, uh, wow. and let, let me let me give you that. That um, I had asked the Lord, "You want me to do comedy more? How can I go on and do this?" I was asking him that within you know, a week or two weeks, like had, I was canceling shows. And uh, then I know that six weeks later was my first show back that I felt the Lord said, I want you to do this show. And I said, okay, Lord, huh. I'm, I'm going to do this. Six weeks. Six weeks. Wow. Right. And so I said, I'm going to do this show. And I remembered the place. It was a, it was a repeat. I'd been there before and, and I was taking comfort in a lot of things that I knew would be there. I, I said, okay, it's a big church, about 1200 people. Um, it, this is an after church afternoon event, but I know the place it's comfortable. They got a big screen, great sound system. They know my comedy, lots of students, lots of adults, just a good mix of people. I say, okay, at least I'm going to place that's comfortable. So mm -hmm. I took comfort in all of that. So when I show up, uh, the youth pastor that had hired me said, okay, we've had a, a few changes here. Um, we're going to have you on the flatbed truck that's outside. Uh, that we made the stage out of. <laughs> By the way, this is uh, this is September and it's Texas, and uh, it was yeah. it was 101 <laughs> degrees, and of no monitors. And I do parody songs mixed in with the stand up. I said, "There's no monitors." He goes, "No, nah, no, no monitors." But we got two little speakers up, up there. I thought, "Great." I said, uh, "And so, are you going to put chairs out here in the front?" He goes, "No, no. There's where the people sit." And I kid you not, 40 yards from the stage is a tent with chairs set up and for those that don't know how comedy works <laughs> it doesn't usually yeah, work right. 40 yards away from from the comedian uh you know? <laughs> no so, so it sounds like the uh deck was stacked against you there <laughs> hey i'm up against a, a hard break uh sure. can i hold you over for the break absolutely all right mike hickman he'll be back uh six weeks after this tragedy he's doing a show he's going to share with us what happened and if you want to hear this program again it's easy to do that go to our website darrenstrublo.com you can listen right off the website or get our free app for iphone and droid the links are at darrenstrublo.com you're on the darren strublo comedy show Your business needs a great website. Your business does not need to build it yourself. Corporations have crumbled over the words, we know a guy. You don't need a guy. You need a strategy. You need a vision. You need a professional partner who knows how to get you where you need to be. That's Cross & Crown. We'll deliver a custom site packed with features like content management, SEO, analytics, and handcrafted coding. And Cross & Crown websites don't cost a lot or take long to build. Remember, we're pros. Look, if you're really into the whole let's do it ourselves to try and save a buck thing, you're better off grinding your own store brand beans to make office coffee or switch to two-ply in the executive washroom. 
At least then, the only people who'll notice are internal. Cut corners on a do-it-yourself site, and the whole world wide knows it. Learn more. Talk with the pros. Visit Cross and Crown online at CACPRO.com. CACPRO.com. When the Lord Resistance Army came to our homestead, I was very scared. We knew that we couldn't stay in the huts anymore. My name is Olive Aneno. I'm from Machwini, a small town in Uganda. I felt very helpless most of the time, hiding from town to town and sleeping in the forest. I felt like I was losing everything. Things changed for us when I became involved in the Compassion Program. Through the Compassion Program, we was able to get my first pair of shoes, get a mattress to sleep on, get the best medical care that I needed. Compassion made it possible for me to be where I am today by giving me hope. My life has changed only because someone believed that they could make a difference, that they could release a child from poverty. Hi, this is Darren Streblo, and I'm a Compassion Sponsor. Join me in bringing hope and laughter back into the lives of children. Go to DarrenStreblo.com and click on the Compassion link. That's DarrenStreblo.com. The Darren Streblo Comedy Show. We're back with Mike Hickman after uh, the tragic death of his uh, beloved son, Eli. Six weeks later, he's doing a comedy show on a flatbed truck. 40 yards from the audience, no no monitors to, to listen to what he's doing. Right. Uh, and you were going to tell us how that went. Right. So uh, to recap, I was taking comfort in good things and everything that, that could have been negative happened and showed up. So there's just this grass, grassy knoll in, in front of me. And I said, okay, Lord, you, you called me here. You told me you wanted me to, to begin my shows again. Yeah. And so I was introduced, about the end of those words, I was introduced, and I walked up the steps onto this trailer uh, stage. And literally, Darren, it's as if when I stepped up on the stage, it's as if the Lord just put this robe of mercy on me. It was just crazy. Uh, huh. I, I didn't feel hot. Uh, by the way, I was nauseous all the way there. I, I felt sick all the way there. That all left. Didn't feel hot out in the uh, hot sun in Texas, even. Right, yeah. right. Wow. So that the, the hot went away. The the sick feeling went away. Um, I went over and I flipped one of the speakers around towards me, and just and then the other one went out towards the people. And as soon as uh, I was about center stage, all these students and kids filled in on the grass between the stage and it went from the stage all the way back to that tent. And so all that blank area was filled with people suddenly. And then, and my people, the the young people, the, uh, the students, and and I love speaking to students and the, the set, it was an hour show outside two o'clock. They had just had fajitas outside. There were two other, like a dance group before me that they wanted to do the time that everyone wants to go to sleep and the show, I didn't even want it to end. My mind never wavered once. Hmm. I never, I was, I was just on, on point. And as soon as I walked off stage, uh, one of the pastors met me and said, Hey, let's, let's have you back. This, this was great. And I got off stage. I began to feel sick again. And, and Hmm. it's as if God had given me this window. And so I asked my wife, uh, who was over at the merch table. I said, Hey, uh, I'm going to talk to you in just a second. So when we went out to the car, I began to weep, and I said, God showed me an amazing thing today, and I don't think it's over. He showed me Philippians 2.13 that says, It is God who works in you to will and to work according to His good purpose. And so the way I was transformed was, if I think this is me doing this comedy and this is me doing the work, sure, it's my personality, and it's 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 talent, it's whatever it is, but it's God that it works through us. And he reminded me that day, I do this. I speak this through you. If you allow me to, that you don't have to come up with strength. You don't have to rely on all those comforts you wanted on the way here, the big room and the good sound system and all of these things. You can't take comfort in that. You have to take your comfort in me. And then, hmm. and then he showed me the audience. He said, if you're hurting and you are, and I know you are, because I had been even angry with God at times, and he can take it. He wants our honesty. Sure. He wants our honesty. <laughs> and I knew that I was wrong, that he was right, that he, um, he can take that. So he allowed me to now see my audiences as hurting people that need laughter, hurting people that don't just need a, a chuckle for no reason at all, 
But if they smile, if they chuckle, if they laugh, if they grin, that is strength because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's what we're actually wow. giving. And so we're strengthening a crowd, not trying to get laughs out of them. And that just transformed the way I think about my audience, my writing. Um, and so I'm more passionate now when you would think like, oh, I don't know if, if, if he can pull this off anymore. Uh, no, it, it's as if God excelled me into it because it, it's him doing it. Wow. And I just want to be faithful to that calling. Oh, praise God. That is the, an amazing story and so inspiring. Now, there's some of our listeners who right now have gone through something just horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe this is one of those mo- moments where, you know, God's helping them listen to the radio or wherever they're picking up the show. Yeah. Um, what would you say to them right now? Um, well, number one, be in the word. You've got to be in the word. It's living. It, it's comforting. Um, I'll, I'll tell you just a couple of things that, that gave me comfort. I think that will, will give them comfort. Uh, I was jogging on the, uh, on the, I'm a jogger. I love to jog. Uh, I have great times with the Lord when I jog and I went for a jog just about a, a year ago. And this is in my blog on my website. You can look back and look up uh, objects in mirror on my blog. And okay. because I had to write about this. I'm jogging, and as soon as I start jogging, I began to weep, and I said, and I just sort of had this wave of grief about a year ago while I was out, and I said, Lord, I said, I, I really want to feel, I need something from you right now. I'm feeling very empty suddenly. I wish my, my son was walking with me or jogging with me, but Lord, I want to find some comfort in you. Will you show me something right now, will you? And I got about, about a half a block up the road, and I saw something <laughs> shining over at the side of the road. And I walked over to it. I was drawn to it, and it was a car mirror that had been knocked off. And I, uh, as I went over to it and I picked it up, um, it was reflecting the clouds and it was reflecting the sky. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. You know, I got to ask you to show me something, and you showed me this mirror reflecting heaven, reflecting. And then I look at the bottom, and it says, <laughs> "Objects in mirror are closer than they appear." <laughs> and I, wow. and when I went, when I went, when I went out weeping, I jogged back home, and I, I have that, and I still have that mirror on my dresser. I was laughing. Oh wow! He gave me so much joy to know that my son's not in the future somewhere. Heaven's, I and mean, he, he is right now somewhere else, just not here in front of me. But he is somewhere else, and we'll be, we'll be united again. But the Lord is closer. Than, than what we think we can see when our flesh gets in the way or our circumstances or our, our fears. And God understands all of those things, but he's right yeah. there. And so I would say, don't isolate yourself. Let the body of Christ yeah. minister to you. Be with people um, that, that know God and, uh, and be in the word. And remember Philippians 2.13, that it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good, uh, according to his purpose. And one other scripture that I, I, me and my wife quote all the time, Psalm 27, 13, and 14, which says, I would have despaired if I had not believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, Hmm. God gives us purpose, and my son's purpose was done, and people have come to know Jesus because he's, he's gone. And do we hurt? Absolutely. Have we been angry with God? Yes. Uh, Have we forgiven? Yes. But God walks us through this process of grief, and in the middle of it, uh, just reestablishes that purpose. Here's your purpose. Now use this and plug this into that purpose. And he does all mm. that through us. Through us. That's amazing. Mm. Mike Hickman, check out his link at our website and uh, hear his podcast. you got a great name for your podcast, The Laugh Track Comedy Cast. Very great. And again, we link to him at DarrenStrubelow.com. Thanks for your vulnerability, my friend, and telling your story and uh, letting it, uh, as you say, uh, comfort others with the comfort that you've received. I mean, it's, uh, it's an amazing ministry you have, and uh, it's exciting to see it grow. So thanks for what you're doing, my friend. Thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for listening to the Darren Strublow Comedy Show minicast. Selected portions from the Darren Strublow Comedy Show. If you want to hear the full show, pick up our free app for iPhone, Droid, and tablets over at darrenstrublow.com. That's darrenstrublow.com. Also, for more entertaining and encouraging podcasts and videos, check out our broadcast partners at the E Squared Media Network over at esquaredmedianetwork.com, esquaredmedianetwork.com. 